So, guys, um, this week, of course, or I should say really at the end uh, uh, of last week, and then there has been these dribs and drabs of, of leaks that are coming out of uh, James Comey's FBI. James Comey sent a letter to uh, Congress, uh, to uh, ISA and Chaffetz, and basically said, look, I know I went in front of your committee and I told you that the investigation, we weren't looking at other emails, but we are aware of other emails that exist that we may look at. We have no idea what's in them. In fact, he wasn't even this explicit, which made the letter even that much worse, frankly. Um, I want to get both of your takes. Uh, uh, Bobby, why don't we start with you? How unprecedented is this for an, for a, an FBI uh, chief to do something like this this close to an election? Well, I, it's never happened before, and in fact, there's a hundred former senior Justice Department officials who have sharply criticized the FBI Director Comey. Um, among those is Eric Holder, the former Attorney General, um, and you know Comey. Comey has a very checkered past. Comey uh, became kind of a hero because he stood up to. When Jonathan Ashcroft was being asked by George Bush to sign on to uh, to a a memo that would have allowed un, uh, warrantless eavesdropping on every American, Comey uh, ran interference. But before and so everybody looks at Comey and says, "Well, he's a hero. He's the one guy who stood up in the Bush administration for the United States Constitution against this assault that was launched against the Constitution and the Bill of Rights during uh, the Iraq War." But if you look at his history prior to that, he went along with everything. He was a you know right-wing Republican ideologue who thought that uh, that. The Constitution was a luxury that after 9-11, the country could no longer afford. And he's been doing Republican bidding since he got in there. If you, you know, why is it? Harry Reid made a really interesting statement the other day, which I, I, I hope you guys saw. Harry Reid, who is on the Intelligence Committee, said that the Intelligence Committee had gotten information that showed that Donald Trump was complicit with the Russian hacking of Hillary's emails. In other words, he didn't just endorse the hacking post-fact, but that he had some other connivance with that hacking, some other collusion with it. And that Reid said... Um, there's an FBI investigation of this right now that Comey gave him the information that Comey says he can't talk about it because it's, it is under current investigation and the FBI has a policy about – Disclosing facts that have to do with an ongoing investigation. Okay, let, let me let me throw a bomb out here, gang. Okay, here, this is I'm coming at this totally different than than I think both of you are. First of all, the the part of the story that the media refuses to embrace is this: three weeks ago, the FBI had this information. Okay, the information it was intentionally kept from Comey. Now that is what. It, 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 all day long, that's obstruction of justice, especially if it comes from the DNC, if there's a telephone call between some staffer who has this information and the White House or some staffer in the DNC saying, look, we're too close to the election, sit on this. That is absolutely obstruction of, 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 uh, of justice. Now, that hasn't even been covered Nobody's not nobody's talking about this because all it is is the same misdirection. And that is the story becomes about Comey rather than Podesta and Hillary Clinton.
the story becomes about Comey rather than how much more information is out there. <laughs> and the story becomes about Comey rather than the fact that we're probably going to elect a president that is going to be chained down with this problem for a very long time. I have personally, Bobby, I have very little confidence in Harry Reid. I have very, I have almost zero confidence in Eric Holder. We saw what Eric Holder did with the Wall Street love affair. We know that Loretta Lynch, when she comes out and she says, gee, this is some great violation, we really know that Loretta Lynch is joined at the hip with the DNC and with Hillary Clinton. So I, I, all this pile on of Comey, I really, I, I really am not buying into, and I'm just amazed that the media is not able to see the connection between, I can promise you this, I promise you this, somebody made a telephone call and said, hold this back for three weeks before Comey ever got it. And you know what? If I'm Comey, I'm saying, Dad, you know, I, I'm not going to be part of that. I'm not going to be criticized for holding something back. Pap, let me, let, me, let me interject here. I mean, I spoke to a, a good friend of mine who was a former uh, U.S. attorney uh, in uh, Manhattan's Eastern District, uh, and he, um, he worked in public corruption, and he said it was stated policy by the DOJ and for FBI that you would never do this in months leading up to an election. In fact, his speculation, the reason why Chris Christie got so close to the uh, Trump campaign was, th it was specifically to, uh, because having been a U.S. attorney himself, he knew that if he was that involved in a, in a campaign, that he could not get indicted, at least uh, in the run-up uh, to an election. I mean, so, I mean, one thing is clear, uh, that Comey uh, was bucking policy. Now, the other thing that's clear, it seems to me, and, and look, I, I, I have, there, there's no love lost here. I have a lot of issues uh, uh, with, with uh, Clinton and the way the DNC has is, is, is functioned here. But uh, the bottom line is, they don't even have any evidence here. There's nothing necessarily to suppress, it seems to me, as far as they know at this point. And certainly if they don't know, nobody else could have known what is there. And we will not know until well after the election as they go through all of these emails. So, I mean, it's, it's unclear Yeah, I mean, me. I really, I strongly disagree with you, Pat, because clearly Comey was protecting his own butt here. He had, he doesn't Well, he's going to go in front of these guys in front of a committee who could theoretically defund everything he's doing. Mm. Right? I mean, these... Well, the, Co the, the Republicans are going to control uh, Congress, and Comey well, theoretically. Been, I mean, you know, they've been they already the Republicans in Congress have already vilified him. They've yep. made him and, and they've been baiting him and baiting him and baiting him for weeks about why did you not indict her? You know, you must have sold out. Why didn't you indict her? And it got to him. Clearly, mm, mm. it got I to him. I think it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And, and he, you know, he said, I, I can't go through any more of this. I can't hold this till after the election. Then they'll really come out, lose all of my friends. I, I got to come out and say it now, no matter what the consequences to the country. So once again, James Comey sold out his country for his own career.